Luke chapter 11, verses 1 through 4. Now Jesus was praying in a certain place, and when he finished, one of his disciples said to him, Lord, teach us to pray as John taught his disciples. And he said to them, when you pray, say, Father, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come. Give us each day our daily bread and forgive us our sins. For we ourselves forgive everyone who is indebted to us. And lead us not into temptation. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Pray with me, please. Holy God. May the words of my mouth and meditations in each of our hearts be acceptable in your sight. May it bring you great glory, honor, and majesty. Through your Son, Jesus, we pray. Amen. Well, have you ever wondered, there is a, uh, an app for your phone that you can get. It's called the Harmony Remote App. And yes, it, it, I don't have it personally. Uh, Maybe I'll get it. Wouldn't it be cool if we had something that would harmonize everything in our life? I mean, this was, it will work on all your electronic gizmos. It, you, can, you can control all of them from your phone. Your, your stereo, your TV, you know, whatever else. You can, it, you can control it with that Harmony Remote app. Wouldn't it be amazing if we had something that would help us be in harmony with God and the world. Hmm. Well, let's talk about that. One more, two more, Matthew. In the beginning, this prayer that Jesus is trying to teach his disciples, hallowed be your name. It begins with worship, okay? In the beginning, when we come to God, we need to acknowledge that He is exalted, not us. He is the one who is in charge, not us. That He alone is holy. Hallowed means holy. His name is holy. It's revered above every other name. God is enthroned above the heavens and... Guess what? We serve Him. Novel concept, huh? Well, when we come to God, that's, that, that's our, that should be our first posture, is to acknowledge, you're Lord and I'm not. The second one, submit that we willingly yield to God's Lordship and subsequently we live at peace with God. Your kingdom come. Now, you know, that takes on a couple of different connotations. What is the kingdom of God anyhow? Well, Paul tells us in Romans 14, 17 through 18, For the kingdom of God does not consist of food and drink, but rather righteousness, peace, and joy in the Holy Spirit. For the one who serves Christ in this way is pleasing to God and approved by people. The kingdom of God is in here, y'all. The kingdom begins here by, by bringing us into harmony with God Almighty and with others. The kingdom of God is Righteousness, peace, and joy in the Holy Spirit. Christ's reign for now will be in, expressed in and through us, His loyal subjects. We are Christ's subjects. We are the children of God, right? We need to keep in right relationship with God in order to be useful to Him, in order to be His ambassadors in this world. If we're, if we're not in right relationship with God... It's going to be kind of hard to serve Him, right? I mean, it's going to be kind of hard to, to be useful to Him as our, if He's our King. If we're living in exile from our King and we're not in relationship with Him, you know, how can we actually be serving that King? <laughs> the next one is 
contribute. God is the one who provides for all our needs as we need them. God contributes everything to us that is good. James 1.17 says, Whatever is good and perfect comes down to us from God our Father, who created all the lights in heaven. He never changes or casts a shifting shadow. God is the giver of every good and perfect gift. It all comes from Him. He is the one who contributes the good stuff to us. You know, we may get kind of prideful. I know I'm guilty of this. And we want to think, you know I've worked hard by George. Look at all I've done. Look at what I've been through and what I've, I've managed to, to pull myself up out of. Well, maybe not. Maybe God helped you along the way. Maybe God provided the opportunities for you to get a leg up. Ever thought about it like that? Because there's a gazillion people that didn't get the opportunities you and I got. And they can't get a leg up because of virtue of where they live and in the, in the poverty that they're in. Go to Haiti if you want an example. There's some, there's some hardworking folks there too, and they don't have a chance. So before you get all prideful and think, I'm the maker of my own destiny, well, you better be exalting God and submitting to Him because He is the one who has given you all the opportunities you've gotten. Also, Psalm 37, 25 says, Once I was young and now I am old, yet I have never seen the godly abandoned or their children begging for bread. Y'all need to remember that one. Once I was young and now I'm old, yet I've never seen the godly abandoned or their children begging for bread. God will take care of His people. Matthew, relationships relate. Relationships with God and others. It's like, for, forgive me, Lord, where I've sinned as I forgive everyone else. Paul tells us we need to, we need to live at peace with Everybody, as far as it is this in our control, we need to try and live at peace with people. Continuing need to be forgiven by God and others so that our relationship with God is healthy and without barrier. In order for us to be effective witnesses for the kingdom of God, we have to be in right relationship with our neighbor as well. Uh, just this week, I went to went by McDonald's there on University. Um, I normally go through the drive-thru and, you know, pick up a, some coffee and a, an oatmeal or something like that. Uh, on, on Tuesday morning, I go to Garrison because I have a men's breakfast up there and all that. And so I, I drop Lucy off and then I, I run through there. And there it was backed up. You know, there were four or five cars before you get to the speaker, you know. And, and I was like, golly. So I, I, I kind of glanced as I was driving in, and there was only one or two people at the counter. So I was like, I'm just going to pull in and park and go in. I think I'll be, it'll be quicker that way. Well, there was a truck pulling in right in front of me, and I pulled in right beside that truck. And, and as he, he and I both got out simultaneously, and I looked, and it was Dick Rain. It was a guy I know uh, from First Methodist Church. And I was like, hey, man, how's it going? And, you know, we talked on the way in, and got to the counter at the same time and all, and I was like, go on and order. And, uh, he, of course, he was asking how we were doing, all that sort of thing. Uh, after he ordered, he, he stepped back to where I was. The lady took off and was filling his order. And I was just still standing there. And he, he, uh, he came back to me and he said, they just put my mother in, in an inpatient, uh, my, my, I'm sorry, his, my sister in an inpatient hospice in Maryland this morning. She's been battling cancer, and um, they're not expecting her to live, you know. She's not, not conscious and all that right now. Like, oh, man. You know, he knows me. He knows the, the road that I've been down. He knows, you know, by relationship, what God has, has helped me get through. And, and he shared that with me. 
And you know, by that time she came and, and ordered, I was like, man, I'm sorry to hear that. Uh, anyway, I, I got my order, and he had already gotten his and went and sat down. And I went out to the car, and I was like, God, that was really, the way you pull that together, you know, I normally would just go through the drive through And uh, he's like, you idiot, go back in there and pray with the man. Why do you think I brought you here this morning? And I was like, oh, yeah, okay. Sometimes. I'm a little slow. <laughs> Uptake. Yeah, exactly. He did one of those. Like, get your behind me. <laughs> so I was like, okay. <laughs> so I go back inside. I find him. It's like, hey, come here. <laughs> anyway, long story short, you know, he was okay with me praying with him in McDonald's. And so I did, you know, and uh, I got an email from him that evening. And he said, my sister passed away this afternoon. Uh, and he said, I, I just want you to know how much it meant for me that you stopped and prayed with me this morning. Amen. You know, all around us, y'all, people are toting stuff that we don't even know about, you know. And, it, and it's easy for us to just blow through life yes. oblivious to everybody else and, and just be worried about getting our our oatmeal and coffee and getting to the car and getting on to our next appointment or whatever. But God God has put us here for a reason too, y'all, to to be a blessing. We're blessed to be a blessing. And you know, even a, a, a even a preacher, once in a while, stumbles into it, and uh, you know, kind of, uh, kind of without without my cooperation. So uh, just be, just kind of know that, um, yeah, we we've got to be forgiven and we got to forgive others, but we've also kind of got to be aware that other people are hurting, and and you know. You never know. God, God coordinates things in a way that sometimes boggles my mind, you know. I mean, so anyway, just kind of keep that. Use that. Uh, the next one, Matthew Oversee. He, he's, uh, he's like, don't let me fall into sin. You know, keep me from falling because you know what happens when we fall it breaks our, our, our relationship with God and it, and, it, and it hurts other folks it doesn't just hurt us it's never just about us that pain it, it, there's a ripple effect that, that goes out and then you know the wages of sin is death and there are a gazillion deaths that can happen before actual death there's the death of relationships and, you know, all that sort of thing. So, oversee, if we fall into sin, it damages our ability to be effective participants in the building of the kingdom of God on the earth, making that righteousness and peace and joy in the Holy Spirit go outward. Instead, we're, we're, it doesn't, it gets fractured somewhere. We end up, and, and we can end up to try, you know, actually tearing down what God's trying to build up. Uh, there's an old prayer in, in, in the Old Testament. You've probably heard of this, the prayer of Jabez, right? Some of y'all have heard that one. Oh, that you would bless me and expand my territory. Please be with me in all that I do and keep me from all trouble and pain. Another version says and, and, that I would not cause pain for anybody else. You know, keep your hand on me that I won't bring pain. Uh, we're, we're, God wants us to be in harmony with Him and with others so that we might bless them and not bring them pain. Uh, you know, as, as parents, as mothers, you know, uh, we oversee our kids in order to guide them and keep them from making mistakes that will cause them or others pain. 
What does the Holy Spirit do for us? Y'all, the, the Holy Spirit, I'm going to give this away. That's our Harmony Remote app, okay? <laughs> the Holy Spirit that lives in us seeks to keep us in harmony with God and with others. This is what uh, John Wesley said. There can be no point of greater importance to him who knows that it is the Holy Spirit which leads us into all truth and into all holiness than to consider with what temper of soul we are to entertain his divine presence so as neither to drive him from us or to disappoint him of the gracious ends for which his living with us is designed which is not the amusement of our understanding, but the conversion and the entire sanctification of our hearts and lives. The Holy Spirit is working within us to make us more like Christ every hour of every day, to keep us in harmony with God, to make us more like His Son, that we might bear witness for Him in this world, that we might be loving to other people. Matthew. Worship. It ends with, uh, actually, in Luke, it doesn't end with the worship. But if you go to Matthew, the King James Version, it ends with the worship. For thine is the power of the kingdom, the kingdom of power, the glory forever. Which, you know, uh, scholars feel like it was actually added maybe later. Whatever. Is it wrong to come back and worship God, to exalt Him, uh, to, to, to once again be reminded, okay, you're, you're the one in charge. You're the Holy One, not me. We've got the Holy Spirit living within uh, in us to guide us into all the truth. Matthew, and guess what? We've got an escrow account. <laughs> This kind of a this is a bonus. God is saving up treasures in heaven for you and for me. He's given us promises of life eternal with Him, and He's promised if we are so inclined to store up our treasures in heaven rather than on earth, He is keeping a running account for us, an escrow account, if you will, that's got our name on it. And we'll get to cash it in one day. And God can be trusted. He can be trusted to hold. It's not like uh, Lehman Brothers or some of them. You don't have to worry about. You don't worry, have to worry about who's uh, who's looking after it. God's got you. He's got your back, and uh, He will pay, and He will pay you well. It's all ours on that day when Jesus comes back. And that's the other thing that it talks about in this prayer. Your kingdom come also talks of, it speaks to not only the here and now with the Holy Spirit guiding our lives, but also Jesus is coming back. He is coming back again. And He will establish His kingdom on the earth. And yes, He will reward us for being His loyal subjects, for serving Him. You can, you can bet on it. You can bank on it. And it's secure in heaven. So don't worry about running out and getting that Harmony remote out. You don't need it. <laughs> if the Holy Spirit lives in you, you've got it already. You just need to go with it and let Him lead and guide you into all truth. Amen? Amen. All right. If you're here today and you've never known this, Jesus is your Lord and Savior, you can come forward and make a public profession of faith today in Him, and you be can begin to live under His Lordship and let the Holy Spirit guide you. Uh, if you need to come forward for any other reason, for prayer or whatever, just uh, come on forward. We're going to sing our closing hymn. I saw the light. I saw the light. Yeah. <clears throat>